Likely ones that we haven't seen. We just climbed up about 2,000 feet. We made it to the highest point in this uh, drainage, the absolute highest. I just got a glimpse of white going behind that knoll. I don't think we can get up the slide. I'm thinking just, is there a way down at that bottom? There are people in this world that go looking for adventure, and then there are those that live it every day. Hey, that's a big one, too. Wow. Whoa. Right on. clear out of the water. Wasn't that awesome? Oh. Nice. Well, I've never caught a fish off the bottom that had live bait in its mouth. <laughs> that is going to be a very short, dangerous trip, but we're going for big rams, you know? We'll do what it takes to get them. That's a 400 pound fish. There's no way we can catch that very close. Ow! It was 420 pounds. It was just under eight feet long. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. Anchorage clearance, November 2814, Charlie. November 2814, Charlie, Anchorage clearance. Yes, I'm a Cessna 170 on wheels uh, northbound with Zulu. November 14, Charlie, fly the east route northbound. Clutch frequency 119.1, clock 0171. Frequency 119.1, fly the east route northbound. We're down here at Papa Lake Tower Port, Mitchell for southeast. Sheep hunting in Alaska poses so many different challenges. You know, first, there just is limited access to sheep in Alaska. Uh, you have to fly in, uh, either fly in by yourself or fly in with an air taxi. And that's challenging. You're landing on tops of mountains, sides of rivers, uh, really short, dangerous strips. Sometimes you'll find sheep but they're 25 miles away from where you can land. These ramps don't get big because they're uh, easily accessible. Uh, they're very difficult to get to. So our strategy on this hunt is for uh, me to fly out today with all of our gear, and then tomorrow Sean's going to drive out. He'll drive as far as he can, and then I will go in and pick him up and grab um, the aviation fuel that we need because we wouldn't be able to haul out all the gear and the aviation fuel on the airplane. get in and land in that pass is to hike around all this steep, jagged, uh, craggy stuff and hunt the backside of this mountain for sheep. And uh, I've been told that there are some good sheep hunting back there. It might be a little steep. Uh, we will have to cross this glacier, and that glacier is way bigger than it looks. That is going to be a very nasty crossing uh, with lots of pitfalls. This area is notorious for being wet, uh, low clouds, and high winds, but we're going for big rams and, you know, we'll do what it takes to get them. Oh, and there they are. They're on the moraine. See they're in the middle of the glacier. This is some tough, tough country to get up to them. Now look at these rams over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rams right there. Just by the size of their bodies from here, I can tell those are rams right on. We'll be landing uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,000 feet, and so it will be the airplane will not perform nearly as well at 4,000 as it will at 1,700. All right, we made it. Sheep hunting. We're here, baby. Excellent. If we get into our hunting spot, yeah, and we have 10 gallons of gas in the plane when we fly in, when we actually land. Um, it would be perfect to have 10 gallons in the plane because that will allow us to get in and out of there short. The logistics of this hunt really make it quite difficult because you're doing mountain, mountain flying and so you need to be light. You can only have a few gallons of gas in your airplane at any given time and then you have to have a place to refuel so that you can keep putting a little bit of fuel flying into these um, very difficult strips. God, that was nice. Hanging out in this cabin. It was raining hard last night. It was raining oh. hard. I think it's all locked up. What a nice place. 
I was really looking forward to filming this hunt. I wanted to go with Rob and Sean last year. Rob ended up pulling out a large ram out of this particular area. In fact, both ended up with really nice animals. So I knew if there was an opportunity to go out with them this year that I would definitely jump at the chance to do it. Looks like uh, the plane survived the night. I'm gonna go up to the next cone because these two cones are offset. I wanna try to get two cones that are the same and that are uh, perpendicular to each other. Oh. Right on. We were off in about 375 feet. Sweet. Last night it was 400, right? Right. It's very important to know how fast I can get off because I need to be able to know whether I can get out of some of these places. We took off and went to go find a landing spot. And unfortunately, there were some high clouds uh, right up in the mountain pass where we were going. So we had to turn around and come back. But ultimately, we are looking for a place to land the airplane. That'll be our base camp and we'll hunt from there. But if you can't get into the mountains, uh, you can't get into the mountains. We can make a big push all the way up that drainage. It's going to be a tough hike, but then those might be sheep up there. Hard to tell. Tim and I shuttled out, picked up Sean. Uh, he gave us some gas, uh, much needed gas for the trip out. The ultimate goal was to find a place where there was some sheep and a place to land the airplane. Strip is where it's bright green, gotcha. right where it's wet. And then, Sean, I might go over it with your stopwatch, too. Okay. All right, you tell me when, Robbie. All right. Ready? Yep. Start. Stop. 6.5. We found our spot. <laughs> oh, I'm getting excited now. I'll probably fly that thing, you know, probably no less than five times before I actually land on it. And then, uh, and then I'll land, drop my pack, and then come back out. What do you think, Kimasabi? Oh, man. <laughs> the grass is long, long and it's wet. Really long. The grass is like uh, this tall up there. When I first came in, I'm just coming in perfect. Oh, I had it set up just right, and I'm just starting to touch down in this grass, and I'm thinking the grass is about a foot long, and the bottom never came. And the plane's thinking, and the plane's thinking, and I'm thinking, man, when are we gonna hit the bottom? Right on. No adrenaline rush there. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some tail well remnants here. <laughs> I think yeah. the grass is a little high. That's the bush flying in Alaska for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It took us four trips to get in. Uh, just into this very, very short, high elevation, very dangerous mountain strip. Um, very majestic peaks up above us here. We're at about 4,000 feet with the peaks uh, climbing to seven, even seven and a half uh, thousand feet up above us. That one is tough and craggy all the way around it, but I don't know how it is around the other side. Take the roundabout way, side hill. Yeah, we'll camp out here tonight, get up early tomorrow morning, try to get up to the top. And there's a ram right up there going across the top of that mountain. Oh yeah. And there's the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> you look up there long enough, you might start seeing some. We plan on getting up this morning early and getting a start up the mountain. We're still about a day away from the opener, but we're hoping to get up top. It finally has cleared, so we're getting ready to head up. We've seen sheep on both sides. Hopefully we can get up, get above those sheep, get ready, and uh, when the opener hits tomorrow, be ready and on them and ready to do our thing. We're going to leave my tent here, and we're going to take Sean's tent up the mountain. So we have a tent to sleep in tonight, 
will uh, plan to be up in the mountains three nights uh, looking for these sheep. Good little hike. Oh yeah. <laughs> Getting the elevation. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. You know, you, you look at the peak from the bottom and it looks like it's just gonna be you know, like a baseball field flat at top, but we know it's not gonna be that way. <laughs> no. I have a feeling it's gonna be just a gradual rise until the next 7,000 foot peak. hard a bottom there is on that shale slide over there because it looks like small rock and dirt rather than shale. Right. I mean, without a doubt, the sheep see us there. Oh, there's no question. Yeah. Here, you know, here it may not be, um, well, certainly not as bad. Just glassing these sheep. We started to move up the ridge behind the ridge line. The littlest of the rams started to run down the ridge. The big one followed. Now they're down below us, probably a good 700 feet elevation wise. We're trying to see what they're going to do, whether or not they're going to feed up toward us, or whether or not they're going to continue on down toward the bottom. They didn't see us. They, um, if they saw us, they would have gone the other way. They're actually coming towards us which is interesting. So we're just going to watch them and see what they're doing. I have a feeling they're gonna come right on the back side of this ridge right here, right up into that escapement area. Yeah, they very well could bed down right up in those rocks tonight. That would be too perfect. <laughs> I know I'm one of the luckiest people <laughs> on this planet. That won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> That ram is working its way up toward us as we speak. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Yeah, that ram's gonna come right up this hill. He stopped right down there. Right about, and it might be a little dip right there. Maybe a salt lick. Well, there could be right there. He either went down the gravel chute out of our sight, or he came up and he's just right below us, one or the other. I got a feeling whatever that second ram does, it's gonna tell us what that first ram did. Yeah, that second ram is on his way right now. He'll follow that first ram, I'm certain of it. He's down in the chute. Yeah. If they don't move. 
see if we can see down. Oh, he just popped up again. Oh, there he is. He's gonna come up to the top. Can you sleep like you are? <laughs> I'm gonna have to. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get my coat on. I'm already starting to freeze. It's gonna, it's gonna get colder. Yeah. Yeah. That could be our camp spot, man. At the top of the world. Well, we got up this morning and the weather wasn't too bad. It was uh, blowing a little bit, but it was dry. And we were able to get out onto the point and take a look at the sheep. But then when we decided to wait it out, we came back to the tent and then it quickly uh, started to rain and it's been pouring ever since. It's been pouring for the last six, seven hours. Our plan this afternoon is if we don't see these sheep by a similar time to what we've seen in the last couple of days at the three to four o'clock range is to hike up and see if we can't get into those sheep from above. saliva running down his cheek, so I gave him the first shot.
Hold on, John. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, John. There you go. Okay, that guy's got to come up. I think we go. I think we go across this ridge. What do you think? You think he might pop up right here? See that too, yeah. We had uh, two actually go up just to the right of the uh, the ice over there. We're crazy, probably not stupid enough to follow them, especially in light conditions like this with the clouds. We hiked our butts off. We went through some nasty, nasty terrain looking for this guy. Okay, here we are. The uh, morning after Sean shot his sheep last night before the hailstorm. And I'm gonna get a uh, little photo, Robbie. So. That is incredible. Alaska Outdoors Television, produced by 59th Parallel Productions.